Hello there and welcome along to the second episode of the Koi Gig Pod, the new home of everything Women's Super League and women's football on Off The Ball. I'm Kathleen McNamee and alongside me each week will be former Ireland international and current P-Mount United player Karen Duggan. Karen, how are things? Good, um, great week. We're back watching live WSL games. Um, not too many shocks in the bag this week, but, but still some very entertaining games to get through. Yeah, exactly. And also we all retreated to watching your fine self playing at the weekend as well on TG Cahir, which was always <laughs> fun. <laughs> I think the less said about that match, the better. Um, bit of a damn squib, nil all, not really what we had hoped for from a Piedmont point of view. It means it goes to the last game of the season, so it'll be a pretty nervy week in the camp, but hopefully we'll get over the line next week. But again, it's exciting. It shows that the league is very competitive, so uh, good for the neutral, not so good for me. Yeah, I enjoyed watching along anyways. Um, I'm happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it improved my Irish immensely. <laughs> uh, the Koi Gig Pod on OTV Sports in association with Cabri FC, official snack partner to the Republic of Ireland women's national team. Uh, as we said last week, we're your one-stop shop for everything women's football. It's very exciting, as Karen mentioned already, we actually had a weekend of women's Super League football to comment on, so that's coming up next. Later on, we will be joined by um, OTV Emma Carroll who will bring us her team of the weekend there was some controversy on social media about it for the last one we released so looking forward to digging into that with her and we will also have a very special interview coming later on with Ireland and Arsenal's Katie McCabe um Karen you know Katie quite well obviously six wins from six this season with Arsenal had that 4-0 win against West Ham at the weekend what more can we say about Katie McCabe that hasn't already been said Nothing really. We're, we're running out of things to say about her. Um, but what I think she's shown at this point is she's she's misses consistent when it comes to Arsenal now. And there's a reason why she's Ian Wright's favourite player at the moment is because week in, week out, doesn't matter the position, she's performing to such a high level. So again, against West Ham, pretty flawless. Um, biting in, starting off those attacks from a deep position and, and the link up play with if it's Mead in front of her, if it's Iwabuchi, you know, they just read each other so well at the moment and, and they're just a really, really well-oiled machine in Arsenal and they look like they're going to take some stuff and based on the early um, six wins that they've gotten so far. Yeah, they've been incredibly impressive and I I mean, even just from the fact that Katie was October's WSL Player of the Month, Beth Mead was September, Jonas Edevils won Manager of the Month twice in a row now, everything just seems to be going well for them. One player you have to mention, especially after the performance at the weekend, is Kim Little. Uh, those two goals, just incredible play from her. I think it was the first one. She took a slightly heavy touch. The defence got in on her a little bit and it actually just put her in an even better position. <laughs> I'd say I they were kicking themselves afterwards. She's she's insane. Um, She's she's like Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets all rolled into one. I mean... She's getting on the goal in the score sheet now and, and obviously getting a lot of praise for that. She got her 50th goal um, in the WSL, which is a phenomenal achievement. She's playing that little bit higher because she's freed up by Manham coming in. But she's also always back defending and she picks the ball up so well. She, for me, she's the, she's the complete midfielder and, and it's mad to think that she's this far into her career. She's obviously retired from, from the Scotland team and what a loss she is to them. But I, I could watch her play all day. She's, she's a magician. I know that retirement has almost seemed to have given her, I don't want to say a new lease of life because I know she loved playing for Scotland and that was a very important part of her career, but it does seem to have almost given her the space to develop even more at Arsenal. And I think, yeah, 50 goals in 98 games is pretty impressive. I also think her goal, or like Arsenal hit 50 goals this season. So it was generally a big weekend for the London club and obviously off to HB Coge on Wednesday and then North London Derby at the weekend. So there's a lot coming up for the team. It'll be interesting to see if they can maintain this in terms of fitness and in terms of just players not being injured and keep that standard of form. Yeah, they have a packed schedule, but they because they're so good at the moment they were able to take him off after 60 odd minutes they were able to to rest Miedema because obviously she'd had had such a an insane summer obviously didn't get much of a break there she was afforded a holiday during the week and, and it shows the strength and depth that they have in the squad so Little came off and Ford came off and they're bringing on Medema. so I'm sure West Ham at that point um heads were in their boots when they saw that that was happening they put up a good show. They, they started the match pretty brightly and they obviously set up to try and, and stop Car Arsenal, which which most teams will do. But 
when the attacks are that relentless and the movement and interplay that Arsenal have, it was always going to be a tough ask for them. But um, Arsenal were really clinical when they needed to be. Mm. And to turn focus then to Chelsea, who are probably Arsenal's big competition this season, as they are every season. Bit of a disappointing result for them at the weekend, I think. Emma Hayes rated it a 6 out of 10 uh, against Aston Villa, a 1-0 result. Jesse Fleming, the, the Canadian Olympian, the only one to actually get on the score sheet. They had 60, 76 procession, percent possession in this match, which is quite a lot. And with the firepower in that Chelsea team, I think a lot of people would have been expecting a lot more goals. I know they rested Kirby and Kerr and only brought them on very late on the game, but I thought it was a surprising result from the team. It was. Uh, and yeah, they rested those girls, but they've got one of the deepest squads in the league as well. Um, even more so maybe than Arsenal. Uh, it remains to be seen, but it, yeah, it just it failed to flow, particularly in the second half. You thought once they got that goal that they were going to kick on and the floodgates were open. And Villa were difficult to, to break down. Their banks of um, five at the back and four in front of that were, were quite deep. And Villa didn't go out to win that game. It was a bit damage control. But, you know, you, you do just expect more from Chelsea based on the high standards that they've set for themselves um, last season. Um, so, it will be something that Emma will Emma Hayes will be a little bit concerned about, particularly the second half performance. Again, it was just a little bit dead. And she did speak about maybe a little bit of tiredness and stuff in the squad. And, and hopefully the rotation she's doing will mean that they will start to start to freshen up as, as the games go on. But they, yeah, they failed to inspire, inspire. But again, they got the three points. They're keeping tabs on Arsenal. They still only have that one loss, which is the first game of the season. So it is still going to be a tight title race. But in of enjoyment and, and watching the games they were night and day um, the attack and flair of Arsenal and, and what Chelsea brought to the table mm, and we talked a little bit about Tottenham last week and I think their game against Manchester United was possibly one of the int- most interesting setups of the weekend because two teams in very different stages but very similar places in terms of where they are on the table so it was 1-1 uh, Alessio Rizzo and Rio Percival scoring the very last minute equalizer from Tottenham I think it was the 94th minute so pretty impressive timing from them to get that true but I just think what Tottenham have done this season is so impressive when you consider where they came from I know they have players like Alex Morgan last year but that was very much a, <laughs> a surprise signing that no one saw coming exactly and she didn't exactly get to make the impact on the league that maybe you would expect from a player of her caliber um but this is the first time I think that Tottenham have ever taken points off this United side what did you make of the match yeah it was a it was a game that showed that neither team really wanted to lose it at times they, they both struggled to create really clear goal scoring opportunities um Corpella might have been slightly the busier of the two goalkeepers and, and Man United will be disappointed that they didn't see out the game but it is credit to this Spurs team that they didn't um they didn't concede a second when they were under that pressure particularly I thought Russo was really really lively for Man United so the fact that they kept it to 1-0, they kept it, they kept themselves in the game for such a long time. That was massive. And, and it shows the kind of discipline and, and resolute that is within that team. And there's a belief there now, because of the run of form that they're on, that they can take points off anyone. Um, not just Man United, they've gotten some really, really big results to this point. So I think they're a team that are going to be a never say die kind of attitude and, and they're going to frustrate the top teams and, and the teams like. West Ham and Brighton, who are kind of pushing, all pushing for that kind of third, fourth, fifth place spot. I think they could be there, thereabouts, based on their early form. Yeah, I don't think anyone last season would have looked at Tottenham and said that they would be pushing for that Champions League spot. But after six games, they're on 13 points, Chelsea on 15, Arsenal on 18. So they're definitely up there. And I think it's a testament to what Rian Skinner has done coming into the squad. And like you said, instilling that belief, especially after the seasons that they have had in the past um it wouldn't be the Quay gig pod without a quick shout to some of the irish talent we've already discussed katie a little bit but another difficult weekend for birmingham um i saw louise quinn tweeting earlier that it was a frustrating result and that they can do better and they're gonna stick together but what can birmingham do to change their look i mean i suppose it was a great game for grace maloney in the sense that reading kept a clean sheet but with the amount of Irish talent on Birmingham, it's a little concerning for them. It is. They're, they're finding it difficult. Um, they, to be fair, for, for long periods of the first half, 
they were very disciplined in, in how they defended because they had to put so much into that defense it made it very difficult for them to get any rhythm going going forward and there's only so much pressure you can take um, before mistakes start to creep in um, through tiredness and there's a lot of girls in there who maybe it, it is their first time playing at this level and and the transition to to the physicality of the WSL is is maybe telling um, from the performances because they can do well they have good players but when you're under that much pressure it, it seems like it's only a matter of time before they concede I think Louise will, is probably alluding to the fact that they conceded from crosses uh, and, and corners and they're kind of the basic things that they would think that they can get right, that their defence would be good at winning those balls in the air. So I think that they'll be disappointed from, from that point of view. But but Reading did well and they looked pretty comfortable throughout the game. I can't remember a save that Grace really had to pull off, um, which will obviously be great for them to get two on the bounce because they would have been um, a little bit concerned with their start of the season. But to have two on the bounce now, hopefully we'll start to see more, more momentum from them. Mm. And we have the very exciting event coming up this weekend, which is the Women's Football Weekend, where the WSL kind of goes all out. We have North London Derby, which will be particularly interesting considering Spurs' form. City are also playing Chelsea. So I think I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm sure you are too, Karen. And we will have all the information on that next Tuesday. Um, if you have any opinions, suggestions or thoughts for the podcast, or if you have any thoughts on anything Karen and I have discussed so far, please get them into us on Twitter at Off The Ball using the hashtag OTB Koi Gig. That's OTB C-O-I-G-I-G. Now it is time for the official Koi Gig pod team of the week and OTB's Emma Carroll is here with the goods. How are you, Emma? Good. Uh, a lot of back and forth about it this week, to be honest. So it was okay. a bit of night last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to hear it because I know there were some accusations of some Chelsea bias and the likes last week when we did our team of the season so far. Um, and also a little bit of Irish bias as well. So it'll be interesting to see now what you've done with it this week. Do you want to run us through the 11 you have gone for? Yeah, really quickly. Um, in goal, I went for Mary Earps and then I went for a back four of uh, McCabe, Evans, Percival and Moritz. Uh, midfield three of G, Walsh and Little and a front three of Hemp, Russo and Mead. So pick away. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's an intrigue. I'm going to start, and I think I did this last week as well, so maybe this is just something that I'm going to do every week, but I'm going to start at the back on the goalkeeper selection. Uh, Mayor did, to be fair, did have a good game against Tottenham, but I just thought that that last goal should have done a little bit better kind of did bounce over her head maybe her defense should have given her a little bit more space to kind of come out and meet it rather than standing back um it's something my dad always shouts at players and GAs watch the hop and that was the first thing that came into my head when I saw it uh I thought particularly Mackenzie Arnold even though they did see the four had a particularly good game could have been a lot more in the Arsenal game uh and also Leicester City's Christy Lavelle again could have been eight or nine nil if it wasn't for some of the saves she pulled off. So what was your thinking behind her? Um, I, I think she had a good, until that goal, I think she had got a good performance and I don't necessarily think the goal was fully her fault either. I think it took a weird bounce. The defenders, I think definitely probably should have done more. It just went past everybody. Um, but on that, when I said I had a sleepless night and a lot back and forth, they are the two goalkeeper names that I have wrote down is Mackenzie Arnold and Kirstie Lavelle. Um, but my reasoning was, can I really put them in the team if they conceded four goals each? Um, that was my kind of nugget that just stopped me from, from one of them getting in the team because, as you said, if it wasn't for them, those scorelines probably would have been a lot worse. But... Um, I thought out of the rest of the goalkeepers who didn't concede as much, I thought Mary Earps had a bit to do and she she done it well. Yeah, in your defence, she she definitely made a, a phenomenal save um, from a 35, 35-yard strike from Kit Graham. Um, Mark Corpello was probably the busier of the keepers, but she they were kind of straight at her and, and many others will be disappointed with their finishing. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll back you up on that one there, Emma. <laughs> <Phew>. <laughs> I want to see what the rest of social media says about this. So maybe some of them will be on my side. 
Um, and one player as well I wanted to mention, this isn't actually something I have an issue with, but I just think it's a player that probably doesn't get the sort of credit she should, is G uh, with Chelsea. I think in a match where that Chelsea team didn't particularly show their quality, she was definitely one of the main players, probably deserved to get a goal herself. Um, she just seemed to be all over that midfield and very much has taken that role of providing the start of many attacks for Chelsea, but then obviously with the front that they have, maybe not getting all the glory. So I think it's great to see her in that midfield there. Yeah, she definitely stood out. She was pulling the strings there on a on a game that didn't provide too much excitement. Otherwise she was definitely the bright spark. Yeah. Um another player I thought um particularly deserves a mention she's a young player is um Maya Letizia. Um really good result for for Brighton and and they seem to be improving and, and sticking to the task um, that they've been set it's kind of a, a slow ebb that they're improvement but um it was a good game and I thought that that whole back line um was really really solid up against Everton who are obviously a little bit disjointed at the moment I can touch on that another another time but um it allowed Whelan and, and Dan Carter a bit more freedom just knowing that that defense was solid so at 19 years of age to be doing that well uh, she deserves a mention too yeah, and yeah. um, on the G one, I suppose it was. I think I was kind of tossing up between her and Imabuchi as well. I thought, um, she was brilliant for Arsenal, but I could have probably picked seven or eight Arsenal players in that team. So yeah. <laughs> I was trying to trying to find a balance. But um, I thought G, particularly in the first half for Chelsea on Saturday, was excellent, and everything was going through her. Um, and yeah, as she said she sometimes she's a bit underrated and definitely deserves a bit of spotlight shown on her. Hmm. And speaking of Arsenal, you do have a few Arsenal players in there. Of the couple you have, who was the one who really stood out for you? Well, <laughs> apart from Kim Little and Beth Mead again, um, I thought Noel Moritz um, was brilliant down the, the right-hand side um, last night. I just thought, yeah, she created a, a lot of link-up plays with Nikita Paris, and when Mead moved to the other side as well, um, I definitely thought, she deserves she's probably one of the Arsenal players that doesn't get an awful lot spoken about. So I thought she deserved to be in there this week. Yeah, we praised Katie a lot, but it was there was a lot of ball go down the right hand side this time. So she was definitely doing playing her part. Um, because obviously they were sticking very tightly to meet at times, but she provided such an outlet on that right side that they couldn't really stem the flow coming down. Yeah, and I think obviously we didn't include any Man City players in our team of the season so far because they've been very much underperforming and I don't think they actually deserve to be in there. But this week, um, I think Kira Walsh being back in the team has made a noticeable difference already. And her protection and her control over the midfield is just second to none. Her passing and that goal, the strike was just Dreamer. unbelievable. Yeah. And Lauren Hemp as well down the left. She just she's just a constant threat. Every time she gets the ball and runs with it, you just is she going to make an assist or score a goal? And I think she, like a lot of her work led to Kira Walsh's goal down the left, and obviously Caroline Weir's shot getting blocked and coming back out to Kira Walsh. So I think Lauren Hemp was probably one of the standout players of the weekend for me. Definitely, and like you said, Walsh and Weir, that combo in there, they really um, controlled that middle, and, and that was a key battle for them to kind of get right because their defence has been under a bit of pressure, so they provided that cover but also contributed to the attack, so they got that right definitely in, in midfield, and, and Hemp was a, a presence and a thorn in their side down that left for the entire game. Yeah, and even the fact that it forced Lester to change, I think it was like after 30, 35 minutes, they were forced into a change because she was playing that well. And I think she she has been recognised over the years, you know, with her Young Player of the Year awards, but definitely one that I'm excited to see grow more and more. Maybe not with the City team, with the way they're playing currently. I say she could, uh, it depends on how loyal she is to them, but I'd say she could definitely be tempted away to a better team at some state. Well, a better than their currently playing team anyways. We won't totally put City out of the race <laughs> for WSL glory just yet. Um, Emma, thank you so much for joining us and giving us another team of the week. I'm afraid you now have to go away and do another one for next weekend. <laughs> All over again. Is only over. <laughs> Bain is only over for a little while. Big um, weekend next weekend, so yeah. 
the, yeah. uh, the pressure could be on <laughs> definitely um if any of you listening have any thoughts or questions about the team we have picked do you believe mary erps was right are you going to agree with me are you going to agree with the other two do you think there are players that should have been also mentioned jesse fleming i think could also have a shout in there considering that she got that goal for chelsea um please do let us know just let us know on twitter at off the ball and make sure to use the hashtag OTB Koi gig and up next we have a very exciting guest in the form of Ireland captain and Arsenal player of the month Katie McCabe. Now I'm very excited to say that we have brought a very special guest for our second week of the Koi gig pod someone who Karen knows very well this is my first time meeting Katie so I'm very excited but we have none other than Republic of Ireland captain WSL player for October with the all conquering Arsenal at the moment Katie McCabe. Katie another pretty comprehensive win at the weekend how are you feeling? Yeah, I feel good. Um, it was nice to obviously get back into the swing of things with um, yeah, the league action. Obviously, the the first game back after the international break was the semi final of the FA Cup. It's nice to just kind of get back into a rhythm now. Um, yeah, with league action, which is most important, of course. Definitely. And obviously, it has been a great season so far for Arsenal. Um, I was chatting to Beth Mead last week, and she was saying that she thinks you're in the best form of your entire career. And I think that probably coincides with a lot of other players in the Arsenal squad at the moment. Is that an assessment that you'd agree with? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what Beth's looking for making co- comments like that. Um, but no, you know what, obviously, um, it's, been a, it's been a good few years. Um, in terms of just kind of finding my feet over in the UK, it's not an, an easy task. Um, one I struggled with um, initially when I first went over, but yeah, again, you find your feet um, and you you find out obviously the the hard work that, that comes with it. Um, it's nice to then have um, a manager um, like John Monty Morrow a few, few years back from it, uh, after my, after I came back from Glasgow, sorry. Um, to kind of put his faith in me and then obviously kind of continue that um, and repay his faith uh, kind of season after season. I just want to obviously improve and, and be the best that I can be for, for club and country and I feel good right now. So hopefully that continues. Yeah, and Joe is the, the first one to put you left back and I you know you've heard me harping on about how much I don't like that for the Irish team. So he has a lot to answer for. Um, but you are getting a lot of praise this season for your versatility and you've played in a few different positions already in your first six games. Um, is that just a reflection on where the squad is and, and how much depth you have that you could rest Miedema last night, you can play in multiple positions? Um, what's that like for you this season? Yeah, I think um, Joe definitely set foundations for that um, kind of versatility in my game, but uh, in a few other players as well. Um, Initially, when I first went left back, um, yeah, I didn't like it myself, I have to say. Um, there's a lot of defending to it, and defending a few years ago wasn't really my strong point. I used to just love to attack, attack, attack. But under the yeah the guidance of Joe and the coaching staff, they kind of helped me do both. Um, so, yeah, I obviously, I'm enjoying it right now. And you see the foundations Joe set, and Jonas has come in and really implemented his sort of playing style. Um on the rest of the group ever since obviously the start of pre-season so it was difficult to be fair at the, at the start because obviously there's different players coming back from the olympics and um I, I don't know but it's always tough coming back um after a tournament from obviously speaking to the girls um so yeah we've just trying to been been going game by game it is a cliche and i've probably been repeating myself over the na- last number of weeks when i'm asked about it but with the schedule we have, especially with Champions League and stuff thrown in there too, we do have to take things game by game and, and really rotate the squad. You don't know what it's like coming back from a big tournament yet, Katie. <laughs> we're, we're all building towards the big one. Um, and you mentioned obviously Joe and then Jonas coming in this season. And I think a lot of players have talked about how he's kind of implemented his own style, changed a mindset, but I think a lot of that did start kind of last season with Joe and with the review that was he started. What is the feeling on the ground in the club at the moment? Because I think a lot of Arsenal fans would say that it's been a difficult couple of years for the club in terms of the heights that they did used to hit. And now we're seeing, like, obviously, 
won every game so far apart from the Barcelona game so something has changed and something within the players has changed and even the players that were brought in during the summer there just seemed to be an ambition there that was slightly different to previous seasons yeah I think obviously when you you play for a club like Arsenal the ambition is to always win trophies of course and that's why you come to such a big club and I, I, I can only speak on behalf of myself for that but I I think especially with the review process I think obviously clubs kind of at some stage go through that bit of transition period if you like um and I just think the last sort of year for us was that period um Joe done fantastic in terms of implementing the review and the club obviously came on board with that and there's direct conversation now between kind of our leadership group on the women's side to um a lot of the the head guys at Arsenal now when we're really trying to um yeah obviously improve everything um on and off the pitch but ultimately it's our job to yeah to to keep getting results and um with the people off off the pitch in terms of v and and um, recruiting new staff as well it, it all it all helps and we're all pulling in the same direction which is great yeah and it looks like um you're very fitting one thing i noticed is your your counter press is is so aggressive you look to win the ball really high off the pitch and I think I saw that reflected in your performance against Finland. You, there was 50-50 balls that you were going in, winning high instead of uh, dropping off and trying to let them come on to us. Is that something you'd like to see more of from the Irish team, show that ambition to get up the pitch and win the ball a bit higher and enforce our game on t- oppositions a bit more? Because we saw snippets of that definitely against Finland. Yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, that's one thing Vera um, and the staff looked at. Um, Finland, if we're obviously if we're going back to that Finland game, um, they they look to have quite low fullbacks. They don't really like to join in. Therefore, you can kind of, um, with the back five we were playing, we were able to myself and Anya be that little bit higher to try pinch the interception, um, which we did on a few occasions. But I think obviously we were playing, having played such high caliber of teams the last couple of months, even to a year back now. And um, if we're going back to to post COVID and and that Germany game, we've really gotten used to playing under those stress situations with having to defend a deep block but really tightening up on how we are going forward whether that's getting it up to Heather in a channel or um, with Lucy Queen coming in now making it stick where we can get bodies then forward and supporting that um, we're introducing the kind of that next part to our game and I think that showed in Finland obviously we conceded the the goal against Finland and I was off the pitch which I was furious at um, but we didn't sit back and just say, okay, we'll take the point. We we went again and Heather Payne burst down the right-hand side and Denise O'Sullivan, as you know, Karen makes those box-to-box runs for fun and is on the end of it. So that's the that's the type of man- mentality shift we've got on this Ireland team right now. And yeah, it's really exciting. We're, we're going to take that now into obviously the end of this month. I was going to say next month there, but it comes around quick. <laughs> And what is running through your head when you're like sitting on the sideline and you see that Finland goal coming? Because I think a lot of people noticed when you came back on, you were like, you were angry. You were attacking those balls. You were like running forward. It was very obvious that you were looking to get a little bit of revenge on that. Very team. unlike you to be like that, Katie. Really <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah, I'm a bit of a hothead at times, but I've learned how to control it in my, my recent years. Can you teach um, me? Carol- <laughs> I don't know all about that. Um, but yeah, I think, to be honest, I was, yeah, I was standing on the sideline and I think Ange, our physio, um, and Sinead, the doctor, got an awful fright because I was, I, was, I was shouting and roaring and I couldn't, I couldn't believe they wouldn't, I couldn't believe it wasn't a booking, um, first and foremost, because then if I had been a booking, I could have stayed on and blah, blah, blah. But, but yeah, it's one of those things, it's football, um, it can, it swings and roundabouts, that can go for you um, the next game, who knows, but as I said, we, we dealt with the situation um, and, yeah, started again. So, yeah, it was nice to get the win in the end after that. Yeah, it showed massive character and I think you needed something like that to kind of put the ghost of Ukraine to bed. So that was kind of fantastic to see, to see that you could come um, from conceding under like difficult circumstances coming back to, to attack the rest of the game the way you did. So I think as, as a, a watcher on, that was definitely... A development point um that was really good to see from our point of view that was and like you said um obviously that ukraine game 
still haunts me at times. Um, but no, look, we moved, we moved on from it. We have to learn from those situations. It's a, that game in particular was such, yeah, there was a lot riding on it. Um, and ultimately, we didn't get the job done. So we need to learn from that as a team. And I think we have been. I think we've, we've kept building. And I know Vera obviously likes to play those higher ranked oppositions then because it comes down to those kind of big games in the group, those four second seeded uh, teams that we need to get points out of. And I think then that obviously that showed then against Finland. Vera has talked a bit about, um, like, again, obviously playing against those higher caliber teams, teams like Australia, and then getting ready for the inter- the actual proper international break, but also some of the girls training with, like, boys teams and men's teams as well to kind of up fitness, up speed. Obviously, we've seen more Irish players go over to the WSL this season. Do you think this is all just, like, building towards a more exciting future for Irish football in the sense that, it just seems to be that the team in particular has taken quite a step forward. Like some of the runs that players were making during that last game were absolutely insane. And I was looking at them going, how are they going to have any legs for the full 90 minutes? But everyone, the fitness just seemed to up a tiny bit, the skill, the precision. What what has it been? Like, is it just a combination of all those things, do you think? Is it a mindset change? Yeah, I think it's, yes, yeah, a number of things. I think ultimately... Um... I don't know, Carol, you might agree with me this. A few years back, maybe we might have died a death in the 60th minute because of our fitness and we weren't training at such a high level. Um, but within the squad and within that kind of group we have, there's a lot of players now playing professionally, which is every day, and they can they can dedicate themselves to the fitness and the football. Um, it's still difficult for, obviously, the, the players back home playing in Ireland, but they're well capable of doing that as well. Like I spoke about Anya, she's up and down the wing just as much as I was, you know, um, and she's been doing that for as long as I know her. Um, it's, well, I'd obviously, I'd like to see the Irish League improve in that sense and even go semi-pro um, so that we can really push on because we've got such quality that comes out of Ireland. Um, obviously, we do lose those players um, to the professional leagues, whether it's WSL or over in America, Germany, and... Um, but we produce such really good players. Um, so one day, yeah, I'd like to see maybe the, the Irish League go semi-pro and Cameron Duggan on the sideline managing. <laughs> Not a hope. Get sent off every game. Wouldn't have the mentality for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but I think that's a great point. And I think that's what everyone who's currently in the league is pushing for because that, that period between, sometimes we're sending players over too soon maybe and then there's a confidence knock and we're saying oh why aren't they performing in the way they did um when they first went over but they have a massive transition they're maybe too young their first time living away from home and and they don't have the same support system so if we had that semi-pro structure in place it would just make that transition a little bit easier like you said you you went out and loan obviously there was injuries and, and things that contributed to that but that was a, an interim step that allowed you to have the maturity and stuff to go back to Arsenal and say, right, I'm going to make a right go with this. And now, arguably, you're one of the best players in the league. So I think you saying that is obviously a real, should be a catalyst for change as well. Yeah, for sure. It is. A, the, the transition is, is difficult. It's not easy. Um, as, like myself, I, I, I learned first time from that. I was 19 going over and I thought, yeah, this is it. Not, not this is it, but I knew there was obviously going to be a lot of work to do, but I thought it'd be not easier, but yeah, perhaps a more simpler way of getting into the team and stuff. But you, you see straight straight in, um, we, I was in a team full of superstars um, and it was so difficult and I really, really struggled. And yeah, I had to go out on loan and loaned out to Glasgow City then for six months and that done me the world of goods just to play and gain confidence and score goals and just kind of enjoy it again um but like that as you said if we had obviously the league that can yeah maybe hold on to a, a player or two just that extra year later and then obviously go over when you when you have matured it could be the it could be the difference you know you said recently I think it was in the interview with the Guardian you did after you won the player of the month for the WSL that they were asking you about the equal pay with the Irish team and like what a big step it was. And you said that you wanted, you know, as proud of that as you were, you wanted to keep pushing and keep breaking down barriers and kind of keep that momentum going for you. Could turning the uh, the league at home semi-pro, could that be the next barrier for the team to kind of help break down? 
Yeah, of course. Obviously, yeah. I mean, I wish I could just like it be done overnight. You know, I I would do that for sure. But it, it, there's a lot of logistics um behind it, and we need to obviously um yeah, as players, we need to concentrate on our jobs, which is obviously getting um results on the pitch. But if we can influence our health um anything back home, of course we will. Um, we we all came from that the league, the women's national league back home, so we do our utmost to help it. Um. I think yeah, um, it's it's gone great. Even seeing um, on the weekend, Cork City play at Turner's Cross, and they had a record crowd of a th- I think there was a th- over a thousand people there watching. Like that is a milestone itself. And if we can build momentum off that week in week out, um, I think we can. Yeah, we're only going in the right direction back home. Yeah, I had a great time watching Karen at the weekend. <laughs> Game of ping pong ball up in the air for the whole game. Um, Practicing my yeah, Irish. Being I right. didn't have a great time in that game. It was my first time moving in six weeks after my injury, so we won't get into that. Um, <laughs> um, you used to have your game this week, right? The- yeah, last game of the season this week. I'm sure you'll be out in force supporting Piedmont. You know how much you have, you love us. Yeah, yeah. I've seen remain. Oh, we had some good battles in our day. Um, <laughs> you were only a young pup. I was I was a young bitter old one. <laughs> um, and I suppose to throw it back to say Arsenal, the form you're in at the moment. Obviously, Champions League coming up this week, very exciting, and then North London derby at the weekend. It's a busy period for Arsenal. Like I think you two games every week until Christmas practically. How do you kind of keep yourself? mentally prepared because I think you more than anyone else in the squad I know Jonas Eindeville has been changing the squad around a lot more but I still think you're probably top minutes of, out of every player how how has that been for you and how are you looking at the next couple of weeks yeah I've been really like I'm um, I'm enjoying it um of course uh, as a footballer you want to play as much as you can um and I'm happy to obviously continue to do that and um, week in week out when the manager calls upon me um as we spoke about earlier the the depth in our squad is fantastic um the recruitment done in the summer bringing the, the likes of Keith and Tobin um Frida Manum and um, they've really hit the ground running with the club um so now it's it's enjoyable um mentally going into each game um it's it you kind of get into a rhythm with it. Um, you kind of know it's going to be game, recover, match the minus one, game, recover, and so on. Um, but it's enjoyable. Um, it's what we want to do. Obviously, we want to be competing in the Champions League, and you just kind of have to enjoy it um, as you keep going. So, yeah, on to Denmark. I fly to Denmark in the morning um, for obviously the, the game over there on Wednesday. So, yeah, all good. <laughs> We're honoured that you, we get to talk to you before you fly off to Denmark. <laughs> Busy the last couple of weeks, especially going over to Scandinavia and stuff. Um, and then when you, you've you been praised by, say, Arsenal legend Ian Reich, also like Irish players like McGrath, what's it like for you to see someone like that? And say, I think Ian Reich a couple of times, it's been names thrown up, and he's like Vivian Miedema, Tobin Heath, all these Inter- massive international stars and he goes Katie McCabe that's who is playing is my current favorite player like how does that feel to you when you hear that yeah it's 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 really nice um obviously for a legend like Ian Wright he, he came to our game uh I think it was the Everton game in person um I know he's an advocate of, of women's football over here and he does fantastic things for the game um so yeah, to be getting comments um from me and it's yeah, it's pretty special. Um, but yeah, quite humbling and but ultimately he's a he's a lover of Arsenal and and so am I. So we just want to see the club doing well, you know. Um and even the the tweet from Paul, um, yeah, that was that was pretty cool, I have to yeah. say. Oh yeah, pretty cool. I'm pretty sure when he went to that game, you could actually like hear him on the broadcast shouting like he was that loud and so happy just to be at a match. It was quite enjoyable. <laughs> like he's an Irish legend then obviously him keeping an eye on our games um it just it just shows how how big this this is getting this women's football we're growing and yeah we're not going to stop um we want to keep yeah keep going and keep um yeah getting getting talent full hopefully we'll break some records this month um by getting people in um obviously with COVID I think all the COVID attendances is 
I think that's gone now. So yeah, hopefully we'll break a record this month and yeah, keep it going. Yeah, it is. It's getting massive at the moment. And, and every time you're in camp, you seem to be making strides like the new Sky Deal and things like that. And and you're always the, the face of it. And we're obviously dragging your time out of you now. How, how do you deal with that? Is it just something you get used to and you build it into your routine or do you find it a little bit draining and you just kind of have enough of it by the end of the week and want to get out on the pitch? Because obviously I know you, you'd hate to be listening to my voice too often. No, like I actually, I really don't mind it. I think it, it comes, it comes with it. Obviously as, um, as women's football is getting bigger, so will everyone's profiles and you just have to embrace it. Um, and it's, it's good learning you're meeting new people and, um they're they're coming on board like you said about this the sky deal and the cabris and um, they're coming on board to to help us and to help promote the game and and who we are as a team and what we represent so yeah it's always i honestly i don't mind it at all i enjoy it i enjoy doing podcasts like this as well like it's fantastic um i think um with the platforms we have i think it's important to use them um yeah and do it with you're not without the gift of the gab anyway so <laughs> Your hand. But you you're obviously been captain for a long time now. You're made captain at, at 21. Is that that was right? Yeah. So when you were first coming into the squad as a young pup, you were looking up to these girls, obviously, and then they became teammates and you were yeah, yeah, exactly. I was just fishing for that. But um obviously, what was the transition like then? Like looking up to people, then becoming teammates, you obviously a big character in the dressing room to then having to be the leader of that group was it it was did you find it awkward ever or was it always kind of uh, uh, did it come naturally to you um i think initially when obviously i first kind of got the call um after emma's departure i, I was I, I was surprised i didn't think it was it was going to be me at, at all um obviously with the yeah the groups of players we had in the team Karen, you know yourself um or, or like it was a shock um but ultimately um Colin had seen something in me um, and I of course I would I said yes to it um, and I just had to kind of learn on the job and um, it was it was difficult but what made it easier was the likes of those older players around me and surrounding myself with that experience whether I needed to yeah speak about something or if there was an issue or we needed to approach things and um, I had that um, yeah experience around me the likes of me Fahi, Louise Quinn um, Diane yourself like you, you obviously you were there initially as well so it was yeah I think without them um I probably wouldn't be where I am today and the learnings obviously I've I've learned over the last few years has been massive um and definitely matured me oh yeah I matured a lot quicker <laughs> look at her laughing as well <laughs> I don't think you needed to mature you've always been very mature <laughs> <laughs> from, as you said you go from being the kids, uh, being the youngest in the changing room, um, and within two years, then you're the the captain, and um, it's quite surreal, and you kind of have. I think to it reflects the trajectory you've been on though ever since. Like I think we always knew you were special from the women's national league. Um, I would obviously always try and pay special attention to you, leaving the boot in and matches, but that was because of your quality. And then you went abroad, and obviously you've gone from strength to strength. So I think you being made captain was actually a natural step. Maybe it became became little earlier than people expected but now that you're there and you're established there I think anyone it's clear for anyone to see that um you were born for that position that no one is a better leader and no one loves putting on that green jersey more so um yeah proud of you proud of you Kite. thank you I appreciate that <laughs> I'm tearing up a little bit here guys this is <laughs> you can leave Kelly <laughs> <Kelly>. Kelly. <laughs> I think I might have to but sorry guys we're, we're gonna go off now what's that route <laughs> that's not I mean it's lovely to have that as well and I think that's probably one of the things that we're really fortunate with with the squad we have is that the access people have had to players like yourself Katie and Karen now that you're like obviously pretty much the voice across all these different platforms talking about women's football and everything there's been so many nice routes that have come up for everyone and everyone still is in contact and you know we get to have chats like this which is really nice um looking like to the last couple of games and how the team performed and stuff I think after the Euros and everything that happened with qualification there there was a few questions around the Irish team do you think that those questions 
have been resolved now or do you think it will take the entire qualification period to kind of show what this team is capable of and what this team I suppose wants to achieve yeah of course obviously you're as our as the game increases and as our profiles grow as well we're going to be that under that bit more scrutiny um and our performance will be yeah under a watchful eye you know obviously we ultimately haven't been um yeah we haven't been successful in what we want to do in terms of qualifying for major tournaments but i hope that the fans and everyone else that's following us see that we're trying to improve and we're trying to build um and obviously the the last camp um we can see some positives and how we're looking to play and how we can adapt our game um by who we come up against so hopefully it'll be another positive one at the end of the month but one we're for sure taking game by game Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want to put any pressure, but one of the games on the 25th is on my birthday. So if you could do a good job, I would I would appreciate that. <laughs> Lucky a game. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Hope your birthday wish is gonna be for that. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Slovakia is a team you'd be fairly familiar with. I think they were the first team we played a friendly with, obviously, after the 2017 um stance and, and all that. And that's kind of what's led to the increased scrutiny, us kind of taking the stand and, and asking for more. Uh, a better professional setup and that's coming year in year out and there's still a way to go but I can imagine you're welcoming that scrutiny and and that pressure because you do want to take that next step so that's important that it comes to that it's not just sure aren't the girls doing great and we'll try and get extra attendance you actually do it because you want to see improvement and make that next step and be that generational team that that breaks that barrier of, of qualification. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, you touched on the yeah the strike back in two thousand and seventeen, and how much you wanted to build off that. Um, and going into that um qualification, the World Cup qualification, we we got the the famous draw against the Netherlands, and we we beat in Slovakia. Then out there, we know how tough it was. Um, but yeah, ultimately, even when the equal pay announcement went out, um, at the start of the season back in September, um, our first game after that was against the Australians, and. We know what a team they are, and I watch them. Obviously, I've got teammates there. I watched them in the Olympics and how successful they were. Um, and they qualify for World Cups, Asia Cups, and 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 stand toe to toe against the best teams in the world at times. And for us to go out and put a performance um like that, obviously, was we wanted to make a statement. Um, and for sure, wanted to build off that too. Now. You may have seen on some of our social media channels, but uh, thanks to Cabri, we actually have asked our listeners to uh, put in a few questions. They're able to win some chocolate. So they get to talk to Katie McCabe and win chocolate, which is a pretty good combination, if you ask me. Um, and anyone can join in the conversation. Just use the hashtag OTB Koi Gig on Twitter. And we are always happy to have listeners join in in these sort of chats. Um, but the, there are some very good questions. I enjoy a couple of these. The first one, though, is from at Becca Hain, who has asked you, what can you do on the pitch when you aren't feeling in good form? When I'm not in good form, um, Becca, this is a tough question. I think you throw a tackle in. I think that gets you going. Yeah. Um, someone was talking to me yesterday like about how do I not feel the cold and stuff. I'm like, oh, you just get, get, in, get into a tackle for five minutes and, and that gets your adrenaline going. But no, if I feel like um, it's not going very well, I try do the basics in terms of get a nice simple pass, five yard pass, um, and then kind of grow off that. The tackle would for sure come into it, Karen, as well, um, just to get me going. But yeah, go back to the basics, simple to, uh, simple pass um, in or yeah, tackle like Karen said. You also have your own special chant at Arsenal. I'm probably pushing my luck now to get you to sing us a few <laughs> lines of it. But I saw you say as well that whenever you hear the fans, if the match is going to ask her, she's a terrible singer. Don't <laughs> I, sing. I, they, I was doing an interview with Sky and they, they tried to get me to sing, and I was like, we got my babe. Karen can sing the rest. That'll do. That'll do. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> I'm is, proud of you. It is a good chant, and I think it's a, it's a team favourite. Um, everyone in the team, um, yeah, likes it. I think it sticks in their head. So well done to the fans for for that one. Yeah, no, it is a good one. I was at a match. This was like pre-COVID. It was Arsenal and Chelsea, and people started singing it. And the tricolors were going. And I, I just moved over to London at that stage, and I was like, "This is it. I'm home. I love this." <laughs> um, LJ Keegan eighty seven has asked, "What's the plan for after football? Could easily see you as a prominent TD." <laughs> 
TV. Yeah. <laughs> well, Karen says I'm quite gifted a gab, so maybe. Um, Someone from my spot. <laughs> um, you know what? I've not actually thought about it too much. Um, I think maybe, yeah, TV would be cool. Um, I don't know if I'm actually even good at it yet because I've not done it before, but I'm doing, I'm currently doing my coaching badges with the FAI as well. Um, I'm on the UEFA B course with a few of the, the girls in the, in the national team. So, yeah, maybe coach McCabe perhaps in the future. Who knows? Draft Karen in to be my assistant. Nah. Strictly come dancing, I'd say, first for yourself anyway. <laughs> I'd say you've got a few Irish hearts racing at the idea of Coach McCabe. <laughs> we could also get McCabe for president trending. I feel like that's one that would go down. your cave woman, Katie. <laughs> nah, you're better woman. You can be a good assistant coach to keep me level-headed when we're losing or something. <laughs> no problem. Um, and then at Joey Mac. 1111 says hi Katie if we consider the talent and the experience within the squad is there anything that needs to be done now to allow you to become coaches managers and to keep that talent within the Irish football system in the future um I didn't really hear that question is it all right if you repeat it yeah of course it's basically like uh, if you look at the talent and experience that's in the Ireland squad at the moment, is there anything that needs to be done now to allow you to become coaches and managers and to keep that talent in the Irish system in the future? Um, I think just yeah, the, the level of investment um, and more um, to keep obviously working at grassroots level. The, we see firsthand the, the participation of like young girls in football has increased. And if we look, keep looking to build on that year in, year out, um, there could be a few more Kate McCabe's to about come a few years. Um, even the options that the FA do for us as players right now to, to do the coaching courses so we can keep improving um, in terms of post-career. So, yeah, it's going in the same direction, but we need to obviously keep investing in the game and, yeah, looking to build off that. Sounds good. I think everyone will be very happy with those answers from you. I'm, I'm most excited about Coach McCabe, I have to say. Yeah, that one's already got me going. It's a bit like Magda Eriksson said something similar a couple of months ago, and I was like, oh, yes, I cannot wait for this women's football future <laughs> where all these great players are becoming coaches. <laughs> oh, yeah, who knows? Maybe one day. Back to a semi-professional women's national league. Then I'm the Irish squad, no problem. Shabu. Nah. <laughs> I feel like that's a conversation that could keep going for a while. <laughs> it doesn't end. For another hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to organize some sort of like live event where you guys can just have that proper chat and I don't know, we'll get the crowd to join in and stuff. No, uh, we couldn't. We couldn't get we couldn't get into the, the real the real depths of it now I don't think um but while we have you know, we want to get our money's worth out of you because we know you're very expensive because you're such a big deal now we'll do some uh do some teammates questions with you because I know that um people will be looking to to get to know the women's team more and they're trying to get to know the WSL more obviously with more exposure so um we'll go hardest work in teammate in the women's national team right we'll go yeah either or, or both we want to get our money's worth like I said we're very expensive by the minute. I'll go Ireland. Um, yeah. This is an Irish podcast. Yeah. Um, and I'll go to Denise O'Sullivan. Worst trainer. Oh, God. Uh, I don't know. Oh, cop it out. You're cop it out. I'm not. Say, I'm not going to sit on the fence. I'll call someone out. Um, no one's actually. No, you don't have to. You don't have to. It's grand. Who is? To mind. I feel like we. Yeah, we're Ireland. It's like everyone's training hard because mm. everyone wants to play. You know. Maybe. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Who's the dressing room DJ? Me. Sometimes Grace Maloney, but I had a few. Um. Yeah, hits in the last camp that went down a treat. So. Katie, you do have some great bangers. I've seen your Spotify playlist and listened to a few of them before. And I actually, I have a friend who messaged me and was on her way to hockey wearing a McCabe jersey, listening to your playlist, trying to get herself like jazzed no, up. That's public. Is that yeah. public? <laughs> There's some great tunes on it. I've listened to it a few no, times. <laughs> no, I won't. I'll leave, I'll leave it public. I didn't know it was public. 
<laughs> there you have it. Okay, who takes the most selfies? A uh, has to be probably Neil Farrelly or yeah. Grace Grace Maloney. Fair. Kitman's worst nightmare. Who is the Kitman's worst nightmare? Yeah. Me. Me or Diane? Okay. Diane because she, Diane's in charge of like when what we wear and when we wear oh, okay. and and um, so she's kind of the organizer in that sense. But then if okay. I'm, I've had fights with um not fights disagreements with the the kit um our kit woman because they keep giving me like large armbands. I don't know. I have to get on the bicep curls. Come on. Basically, that's what they say. <laughs> it's my fault. It does sound like a bit of a hint, Katie. That <laughs> Fear is whispering in their ear, like get Katie in the gym. <laughs> She's definitely not. No. <laughs> Okay, who's the fastest? Heather Payne or Leanne Kiernan. That'd be a tight race. Mm. With them, though. Two absolute flyers in phenomenal form. Um, who is the smartest? Amber Barrett will want me to say her. Um, <laughs> it'll be a toss up between probably Harriet Scott and um, Neve Fahey's up there too. Yeah. Quite got, yeah, got quite an intelligent team. So, um, to clarify, number bar, either Harriet Scott or Nephi. Yeah. And <laughs> last one, probably know the answer. Who is the funniest? You can answer that, Carol. You are, Katie. Yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know who gives me a good laugh as well? Um, Nephi really lately. Yeah. She's, uh, she gives me a good laugh. Yeah, she's good. Good egg in the dressing room. She's a funny old, funny old fish. I love the introduction of the word lately as well. <laughs> She's upped her game in recent times. <laughs> yeah. um, Katie, thank you so much for joining us. This has been an absolutely wonderful chat. Um, that's it for this week's Koi Gig Pod on OTB Sports in association with Cabri FC, official snack partner to the Republic of Ireland's women's national team. Thanks to our wonderful guest, Katie McCabe, for her time and also to everyone who entered our competition and asked her those great questions. They were very enjoyable. Uh, if we read out your question, keep an eye on your Twitter DMs because we'll be contacting you very soon to sort that fantastic camper. Thanks to Cadbury's. I'm personally really jealous about it. Uh, Karen and I will be back next Tuesday with all the biggest news and talking points from across the weekend's games and, of course, Emma's team of the week. Thanks for joining us on the Koi Gig Pod and we'll see you next Tuesday.